game I want to show you from my files is totally different. Whereas the last game was completely strategical, this game becomes an all-out slugfest. My opponent played d takes e6, and now I played my own idea. Of course knight c6 is certainly okay. I played queen h4 check, g3, and queen e7. White played bishop g2, I develop. He plays f takes e4, I develop again. After bishop g5, I give the push h6. Bishop f4, and then I recapture the pawn on e6 because it hits the pawn on c4, the pawn on e4, and secures control of the e5 square as well. White played queen d3, and now g5. This forces a commitment from the bishop. After bishop d6, knight e5 is quite strong. In the game, white played bishop to e3, but after knight e5, my knight has a fantastic square, plus it hits the queen on d3 and the pawn on c4. After queen e2, the simple b6 secures the pawn on c5, and after castles, bishop to a6, black already has a very clear advantage. The white pawn structure is shattered, and the pawn on c4 is surrounded. After knight f3, play continued, bishop takes c4, queen d2, and now I played very sharply for the attack. I played knight d3 check, king b1, and queen c6, looking to bring my queen up to join in the attack on the white king. The other possibility is I may now want to play knight takes on e4, followed by d5, just anchoring in on the center. White alertly played e5, trying to open the long diagonal. I now played knight d5, and after knight e1, again, white persists in trying to exploit the fact that I have so many pieces lined up on the long diagonal. I now played queen b5 check, king a1, and I have to start bailing out, saving my material with knight takes e3. This of course hits the rook on d1 and the bishop on g2. Note that queen e3, queen b2 mate, is not good for white. Therefore, after knight takes e3, white grabbed the rook on a8. So I now played knight takes d1. And again, queen d1, queen b2 mate. So after knight takes d1, white eliminates my knight on d3. So now I hit him with the desperado motif. Since I'm going to be captured, I collect this one. White returned the favor with knight takes c5. Now, destroy the last of the pawn cover around the white king with knight takes a2. White played the very tricky knight to e4, threatening to fork me on d6. So now it's time to bail out. Queen takes e5 check, king b1. Of course, if white interposes the queen, probably I just exchange and I'm three pawns ahead. And now, castles. This timely castling hits the bishop on a8. White saves his bishop. But then, the very diabolical rook f3 threatens rook to b3 check. White responded with something equally clever, knight to c5. This unleashes the bishop's attack on my rook, and the knight, for the briefest of moments, protects the b3 square. So of course, at this point, I could play queen c5, bishop f3, and queen f5 check, and collect a couple of pieces for the rook. Certainly no complaints. Note that queen c2 runs into bishop d3. However, after knight c5, I continued with rook a3. I like the idea of having all of these pieces over near the white king. And this also threatens to simply capture this knight. White continued forward with knight takes d7, hoping to get at my king. But after queen b5 check, it's the white king that has problems. In the game, white interposed the queen, but, of course, after queen b5 check, king c2, queen b3 is mate. The only other alternative was king a1, but then knight c3, queen a2, rook a2 is mate. Therefore, after queen b5 check, queen b2, now, of course, you know, we could just slide the rook over and pin the queen, but I saw a different light here. Bishop to d3 check. 
forces the king in the corner, and then knight to b4 check, discovered check from the rook. And after queen takes a3, knight c2 check forks the king and queen. But even worse, after king a2, bishop c4 check, queen b3, and queen takes b3 mate. So on that note, I'll leave you, but you can see why I very much like the variation after e4, f takes e4, f3, e5. I totally believe in this. I've played it in several games. I've won several games. Black has had very good results. And with a bit of study, there's no reason you shouldn't play this and win many games. Believe me, e4 is a very popular response to the Jinji Indian, one that you're absolutely sure to face. Thank you for spending time with us on the Jinji Indian. So far, on this first video, we've looked at d4, g6, c4, bishop g7, knight c3, c5, d5, bishop takes c3 check, b takes c3, f5. Of the white six-move alternatives, we've looked at the passive approach, e3. We've looked at the kingside fianchetto with g3, and we've also looked at f3, preparing for e4. In volume 3, we will look at h-file action with h4, at one time thought to be the positional or strategical refutation. Also in volume 3, we will cover the combined e4, for example, f takes e4 and h4, when white combines e4 and h4 type action. In future volumes, we will cover preparing for g4, for example, with h3. We will also cover the g4 gambit, the d-pawn push, and we will look at the knight development, the normal knight development, and the clever knight development, knight to h3. We will also look at bishop moves. Bishop to f4 was actually played against me by a Russian master, and bishop to g5 with pressure on e7. And last but not least, we will look at queen moves. Queen a4 pins the d-pawn, covers a5, queen c2 has been played, and queen to d3. Then we come to the situation where white players don't play d5. After c5, they have what I call the Jinji Indian declined. For example, they play d takes c5. However, of course, here we play bishop c3, b c3, queen a5, and this is what I call the triple pawns variation. Also, instead of d5, there's e3, the passive approach, and 4, f3, the positional approach. We will also be covering those in future DVDs. And then, going to the very beginning, nothing so frustrating as not being able to reach your favorite opening. We have what I call the Jinji Indian avoided, where white doesn't even play c4. Instead, he plays 2e4. Of course, we will have some suggestions for you as to what I like to play, and look at some games, and so forth. There's also 2 knight f3, and then you have your dyed-in-the-wool queen pawn players who basically play d4 and bishop g5 against anything. Kind of called the queen pawn bishop attack. We will be looking at all of those in future videos. Thank you again for spending time with us on the Jinji Indian. 